Hey everybody, welcome back to Brian Sloan Artist. If you follow my page, you'd have seen about a month ago that I did a time lapse of this mountain scene. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to do this so you can do it at home or you can do it for your own paint night. It's a fun painting. I've done it a few times with a few different workshops. Everybody's always had a lot of fun with it. So let's dive right into it. So when you're doing a nature scene, what you want to do is you want to start with the background and work your way to the foreground. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the sky. And I'm using Pacific Blue. It's a kind of a, a medium-ish blue. It's not dark. Medium blue. And we're going to start with that at the top of the sky. Just working it in back and forth. Your brush strokes don't really matter too much here. Then as you work your way down the horizon, to the horizon line, you're going to make it a lighter blue. And some people will add some sky blue here. Or you can just simply add some white and mix it with your blue to get a lighter blue. And in order to blend it, what you need to do is when you add the lighter blue underneath, start brushing side to side and just work your way up and back down into what your darker blue was and your lighter blue. And then you can do the same with an even lighter blue and the original lighter blue that you had as you work your way down to the horizon line. So for this painting, we're going to go about halfway down doing the sky, just filling it in with a nice blue. And from there we're going to add some clouds. And so I'll tell you how Bob Ross does his clouds. He just grabs quite a bit of white onto his, onto his paintbrush there and he'll just kind of dab in the top shape of his cloud. Wherever you want to put it, you can put it. I added a couple in the left and a big one on the top right. And then after you kind of have those big globs in there, what you're going to do is you're going to take your brush and then you're just going to flick the top of those clouds just softly so it kind of fluffs out the edges of those clouds on top. And you'll see that it gives it that nice natural effect. And then with the bottoms of the clouds, you can just take your brush and just kind of scrub in a little bit and it'll just kind of blend the bottom out into the blue that's already there because it should still be a little bit wet. And if you notice the white coming out a little bit too much, grab some more white onto it, add some more white back on top, do some more flicks and some more scrubbing on the bottom, and that should be all right. So then we're gonna to move towards the mountains. And for this, we're gonna use kind of a deep purple. And so if you don't have purple with you, what you can do is you can take some blue that you used for the sky, take some red, um, we're using holiday red here, and then add just a, just a hint of black to it because black's pretty pretty powerful. And then when you're starting your mountains, you just pick where you want to go. Uh, so in this one, you can see we're about a third in from the left side with the highest peak. But, and you want to make sure that your, the brush that you're using has a point on it. So the, you can see the one that I'm using is square. So it has a point. You're just going to pick that point and then brush it down. And brush it down. Then I'm, by creating more mountain peaks, you can just do the same thing. Just move a little bit over to the right or left, pick that point and brush it down. Once you've got that all blocked in, you can add in some lighter highlights, some snow. So this is where you want to make sure that you know which way the light source, or in this case, since it's nature, um, the sun is coming from. And so for us, it's coming from the right side, our right side of the painting looking at it. So the brightest highlights, are going to be on the right sides of those mountains. And so we're just adding them in there, doing some dabs, that'll create the texture of snow instead of doing brush strokes down. And once you've kind of got the lighter highlights where you want them, we're going to mix some white in with that purple, that dark purple that you had already, kind of make it a medium color. And those are going to be your medium highlights. And so we're going to go back in and dab in between all of the light patches of snow and a little bit over top. And then that'll create more of that, um, that depth and that contrast that you're looking for. And sometimes when this happens, you'll go over your light highlights a little bit too much, but it's really easy. Just grab some more white after, some pure white after that, and go back over and you can just dab over where you want those bright, bright highlights to be. I recommend having really bright highlights right close to the tops of the mountains. 
as that's where it will be the most vivid and most seen because at the bottom of the mountains we are going to cover some of it up a little bit. And then for the shadowy side on the far left, that's where I did some more brush strokes to kind of create that more shadowy, um, distant effect. Um, and then afterwards at the very bottom, I took just a tiny bit of water onto my brush and just kind of stroked up the mountainside to create that misty effect that you would see at the bottom of the mountain. And then from there, we took some pine green. You can take just a little bit of pine green and add it into that mixture that you already had. And just dab a little bit at the bottom of your mountain just to create the effect that there are trees at the bottom of your mountain. But then we're going to take some pine green, mix it in with a little bit of black to create a nice deep, deep green. And then as you can see here, I'm using a fan brush. If you don't have a fan brush, just find a skinny brush that you have. Um, I've also done it with, with square brushes. They're just, if, they're, if you turn them vertical, then they get really skinny. And we're just gonna dab in the pine trees that are at the opposite side of the lake. And as you can see here, they don't need to be super detailed. Just by dabbing it in, that, that's going to create the texture uh, that you need for the pine trees. And for those of you who like order and like things to be symmetrical and whatever, forget that. Uh, trees don't grow symmetrically in nature, so it looks kind of funny. Um, they just need to be random, random heights. Um, make the left side trees a little bit taller and then as you work your way towards the middle kind of have it slowly work your way down to be smaller and then back up on the right side again and that'll create the effect of the distance of the lake that the far shore trees are shorter because they are further away. Now once we have that done we're gonna add in just the, the dirt on the bottom of the trees, kind of the shoreline, just a very basic. So we're just taking, we have espresso brown here. You can take a burnt umber, uh, even a raw umber would work fine. And um, grab that and just kind of work your way along the bottom of the trees. And as you can see, just working your way around um, the lake there. And from there, we're gonna add in the lake itself. And so here we're using the same blues we used for the sky, the Pacific blue. But then we're also adding in a little bit of turquoise and so I like to add in the turquoise closer to the shoreline so as you add that in close to the shoreline then it acts more as a reflection of the trees because it adds that kind of a green color um, to the lake. And if you want to you can add a little bit of white in, kind of make just lighter spots to kind of be reflections of the, of the clouds as well. Once you've got that in you can really seal in Going back over with that dark brown, um, going back over a little bit of the lake and kind of finishing that shoreline. As you can see, there's little jut outs that I make to create that natural effect that lakes have because lakes are never perfectly round or perfectly smooth along the shoreline. And then from there, you're going to add a lighter color of brown. I think, what do we have here? We have a cashmere tan that we're using. You can add some white to your burnt umber or raw umber, whichever one you're using. And we're just going to dab that lighter brown in there around the shoreline. And that'll create more of a dirt texture. And from there you're going to take the, the pine green that we were using for the trees and you're going to dab that around the shoreline. And you'll see that that'll kind of be your base for your grass. Then you can take a lighter green. I think we're using holiday green here. You can mix a green from blue and yellow. If you want it to be lighter, add some white. We're gonna add a little bit of white to this. It makes it just that little bit lighter green. Dab that around. Remember, you don't wanna cover the whole thing because you wanna be able to see the, the browns and the darker green underneath it. So that really creates that texture that you're looking for and that depth. And then over top of that lighter green, then you can add some yellow. We're just using a bright yellow here and just dab it in there with that uh, same brush that you're using. Once you dab it in all the way across, that kind of creates that texture of flowers.
And then for the foreground in the front right corner, what you can do is you can just add in that dark, dark brown again that we were using. We're just kind of doing like a little mound here in the bottom right, blocking it all the way in. And then from there we're going to start the focal point, uh, the large pine tree in the front. And so what you're going to do for the pine trees, you're going to take uh, the pine green that we were using with black, make it a dark, dark green. And then you're literally just going to be dapping it in, working your way down to the bottom. And remember that pine trees are smaller at the top and get fatter at the bottom. And so you don't want to start too wide at the top or else your tree is going to end up being half the painting and you don't, you don't quite want that. So working your way down, random branches. Once you get the first layer in, you're going to go back with just straight pine green or whatever green you're using without any black in it. Dab over some of the same spots, maybe extend it just a tiny bit. And then you're going to go back again, over top of that again, with some adding just a little bit of white to it. And that'll be those really bright highlights that you can dab in there over top. Then you can use the same greens that we were just using to dab in new grass along the front shoreline. And then you're going to basically be doing the same thing they did along the far shoreline, just in a bigger scale in the front here. So you're going to take the holiday green, dab in little bushes, just kind of in a, in a circle-like form, not perfect circles. And on top of that, you can add some light green, some yellow, some orange. Remember orange, just add some yellow and red together, make, some, make a little bit of orange. If you want to, add a little bit of white to that color to make it just that much brighter. Add just little highlights around. And then the finishing touch is along the shoreline, just with a little bit of white you can see, just brushing in uh, the little ripples along the sides of the shoreline. So I hope you had a good time painting this mountain scene. Send me a picture of it, I'd love to see it. If you have any questions, write a comment, send me a message. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks, thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss future videos like this. And I'll see you next time.